We're doing a little promo on the site called Dead Feb because January and February are absolutely dead for the products that we make. And so we're trying to do, come up with some unique ways to incentivize you guys to buy some of our wallets so I can keep my guys stitching wallets in the back of the shop busy so I don't have to like restrict their hours. So Dead Feb, we came up with the idea of each week in February, one wallet is gonna be available for full customization. You can choose each individual panel, which color you wanna do, what thread color you wanna do. And it's the only time we're gonna do it this year. We'll probably revive it next February if it works well. They're only available for one week each. And the first one is the Claude wallet, so check it out below. Welcome to the Matusa finale where I have all the boots that we reviewed in the Matusa series. If you don't know what Matusa means, it's made in the United States, America. The rules of Matusa are that they have to be under $400 because it's just a more accessible price range for the majority of people. You know, we have Whites, Knicks, all these brands that are like 600 plus. This is more of like your working class, $400 and under. What can you get for a decent casual boot, work boot? So that's why we decided to do 400 and under. The next stipulation, it has to be made in the USA. And we still consider the whole made in the USA with imported parts still part of the whole made in the United States thing. And we are judging this series solely on the quality of materials, not the value, not that equation that is the quality you get per dollar, but the actual just on the surface quality of materials regardless of the price. And so that's kind of the rules of, of the Matusa series. So for the finale, what I'm gonna do is briefly go over each of the boots in the series, give you the kind of the cliff notes of each of those videos, and we're gonna go over the good, the bad, and the best. Basically, what's good about the boot, what should you consider about the bad aspects of the boot, and what is the boot best for, for its particular style and application. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna go over the official Roseanneville ranking, and then we're gonna go over what you guys ranked it, not off the quality materials like we're doing, but we asked you guys to judge it off of value. So first, let's do the Corcoran Jump Boot. It retails for $245, made in the United States, obviously. And the good thing about this is it is a true leather Goodyear welted boot it does have a shank and they're okay materials the leather is okay and you have like this unique little ankle strap for the extra support but other than that the rest of it's pretty bad to be honest because you have lots and lots of just loose synthetic materials there's like four layers of foam at the hill they're not skived down the leather looking material on the bottom is just a leather board uh, the, like I said, the leather is just like kind of loose, really terrible leather. It has a really heavy pigmented layer on top, which for the shine aspect of this boot makes sense, but it's just not the best leather. And so when it comes to what is this boot best for, it's really only best for like historical reenactments or if you want to just occasionally wear a boot that looks like a, a jump boot, but it's not something you want to wear every day. It's not something you want to wear to work. It's just a cosplay boot at the end of the day. Next to the Thursday Logger, this retails for $185. The good of this boot is it's really nice wax flesh Horween leather. It's really thick. It's, it's up to the same standard that we've seen in the more five to $600 boot range for the particular aspect of leather. The sole construction has a little bit more leather than what we've seen in most of the Thursday boots. A full leather heel stack, cork filling, and you have that classic Thursday look where it's not quite the big bulbous toe that you see in Red Wings and some of the Pacific Northwest boots. It's a nice pointier toe with combining some of the classier aspects of dress boots with the hardware and outsoles and look of a logger boot. But what's bad about this boot? Well, you could point to the fact that you have a lot of synthetic materials through the sole construction. It's, they're still resolable and it should be fine for a few resoles, but that leather on the inside would have made these boots last a little bit longer, but also would have raised the price. Just the style for me personally, it's just a weird hybrid for me because I don't mind wearing the logger boots. They don't really bother me, the big bulbous toe. I actually prefer having like a kind of a chunky looking uh, toe and sole. So for me personally, I just don't like the pointy toes. It squishes my toes. I don't like the extended look, but a lot of people it works for. What is this best for? Well, honestly, it's best for somebody who wants that logger look, that big chunky look, but without the, the full chunk of it all. You know, some people just want a slight more rugged look while still maintaining some of the aspects of what Thursday has done, and it's a fairly affordable price. So it's just a good entry level, like a uh, hybrid logger boot to slowly work yourself into the more expensive logger boots, if that's what you're into. Next to one of the more odd parts of Matusa, the Yeezy Foam Runner. It technically qualifies, it's made in the United States, it's under $400, it is footwear, so it qualifies. The good about this shoe is that it's under hundred bucks, it's $80. It's very comfortable, because it's uh, just all foam. And you get the really unique look of a Yeezy, um, and it has allegedly some algae in it to make it more sustainable, even though it's foam at the end of the day. 
Uh, so it's like it's like putting a seasoning on a turd, essentially, is how I view it. The bad of this, it is ugly, and it is just a foam thing that goes around your foot, and Kanye is in trouble for very good reasons. And so that's also part of the bad aspect of this. As for what it's best for, just basically whatever you would use Crocs for, is you could use the foam runners. So that's about it. And here's the super melted one, just if you missed that video. It was we torched the whole thing to see what it'd do. Next to the JK300. So this was a really interesting one because it's a Pacific Northwest brand who m almost all of their boots are over $600 if it's the way they make them with the handmade, all the nails, the, the hand lasting, that Pacific Northwest style. But they made this boot for under $400. So it fit perfectly in the Matusa series. And the good of this boot is you essentially get a Pacific Northwest boot with the really thick counter, the, the veg tan insole, the hand lasting, you know, the, all the stuff that this made those Pacific Northwest boots popular, put into a boot under 400 bucks. But where does the bad come in and how do they get that down to that price? Well, you are missing a few different layers of leather that you'd see in one of the more higher priced boots because you really only have that leather insole. You have a thinner leather shank and that's about it for the sole construction leather. Whereas most of those Pacific Northwest boots are just chock full of leather. The upper leather is a little bit lower quality than the rest of the, the JK lineup. It's a more affordable leather. It's still pretty thick though, but other than that, there's not a whole lot of bad to, to really point to. Some people don't like that the tongue is gusseted lower, but it does make it easier to, to put on and off. So it's, a, it's actually a really good boot for under 400 bucks. So there's not a whole lot of bad. So what is this best for? This is a, also another good entry into the Pacific Northwest really heavy duty boot world because you're not committing six or 700 bucks to a boot. It's only 375, which is still a lot, I get it, but it's almost half the price of their other boots. And it's just best for like a lightweight work boot that's gonna be heavier duty than your like uh, Thorough Goods and your Red Wings, but not quite as heavy duty as the, the full leaded JK boots. So a nice intermediate Pacific Northwest boot. Next to the Red Wing 1907. So this is $310. And thanks to Tactile Turn for sponsoring this video. You've probably seen them on the channel because we've done a handful of videos with them. And usually when you see a sponsor several times, it's because you guys like them, we like them, and they're a successful ad. You can get them in solid copper, solid bronze, or solid zirconium. They're handmade in Texas. They have a nice heft to them, except for the titanium that you can also have as an option. And they also do limited releases. And right now they're doing their deep space collection. So check those out as well. To be completely honest with you, we like them so much that for this video, I was like, hey, do you guys want to sponsor a video? Um, we'll discount the rate if you just hook up everyone in the shop with a, with a pin. And they have those bolt action thing that I can't stop playing with. It's, it annoys everyone in the shop. And when we're in, in meetings, now that everyone has a pin, it's just chaos. Clicks all day, every day. And everyone likes them so much. You guys like them. The guys at the shop like them. Even my nephew likes them. And so he called me up one day. He was like, hey, how can I get one of those pins? I was like, Come up to the shop, do some work, and I'll give you one of those pins. So here's him opening his pin. Since you did so much work and you worked so hard today, whoa, <laughs> here's your pin. It's like Christmas morning. Ooh, what do you think? I like it. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Say thanks, Tactile Turn, for giving me thanks, a free tactile pin. Tactile Turn. For giving me a free pen. For giving me a free pen. And then say, check out the links in the description and get yourself a tactile turn pen. Check out the links in the description and get yourself a tactile pen. Oh, that was the first try, dude. Good work. And so this is $310. The best part of this is it's just a good boot through and through. Leather lining, good leather upper, leather insole, cork filling. It's very similar to the JK300, except for the JK300 has a little bit more leather, a little bit thicker materials. And we've already covered this one in the Matusa uh, finale, so I'm not gonna go super in depth in it, but it is just a really good all around boot. The bad of this boot, you know, this is another one, it's really hard to point to too many bad things. You know, the, the counter isn't full veg tan leather like the, the JK300s, it's a leather board. Um, I prefer leather instead of a cork filling, and uh, that's honestly it. There's not much wrong with this boot. And so what is this best for? This is just a really good heritage boot. It's, it's closer to that $300 price range, it's easy to get, you can get them anywhere, there's no wait times. So if you're if you're wanting to get into heritage boots, the mock toe is one of the first ones people get. This is a wider toe box version and it's affordable and it's built really well. It might be the best heritage boot in this lineup. Next to the Thoroughgood 1957, we also covered this one already, but the good of it is it's really quick break-in period. The soft leather upper while still being high quality, really comfortable underfoot because you got the cork and the, the 
when you don't have that really thick leather insole and you use fiberboard, it isn't going to be as durable, but it's going to be a lot more comfortable faster and it breaks in within a couple days. You know, the bad of this is there is a lot more synthetic materials like with the fiberboard insole, the, the uh, Celastic heel, heel counter. Um, and then I, I personally don't like the waterproof lining, but it's a waterproof boot, so it has to be in there. And Thoroughgood has obviously their options without that lining. Um, but for the price, for under 300 bucks, there's, it's a pretty decent boot. I don't love the, the synthetic welt. You know, that's always been a sticking point with Thorough Goods, but you're also, that's a lower price. What is this boot best for? Like I said in the last video, Thorough Goods would always end up being one of the easiest boots to recommend because of the price point, because of the quality, because of the look, and because you can work in it and use it solely as a work boot. You can wear it as like a casual heritage style boot and use it only for that. You can use it as a hybrid. It's a very versatile boot. Next to the Origin Coronado, I got the Bison version and the, the version we cut apart. And the good of this boot is it's under 300 bucks. The coolest thing about this boot is every single piece of this boot is sourced from the United States, except for one layer, which is that leather midsole. And to put that into contrast, like if you look at any of these other boots, let's say the upcoming uh, Thousand Mile Wolverines, their hardware is probably sourced from overseas, their thread is probably sourced, a lot of their leather is sourced overseas. Uh, the components, a lot of times they don't care if it's the US Vibrams versus the, the Italian Vibram soles. And so to have every, uh, every single component, except for one, in a boot be made and manufactured and sourced from the United States is pretty rare. And it is a really unique boot because it's a low profile boot because of how they don't put a huge heel on them. And they're a very simple boot with the Blake stitch construction. The origins have very unique styling and patterning and paneling. So they're, they're very cool. So that's what I like about the origin boot. As for what's bad about it, I would say it's because of those synthetic materials on the inside, it's more in that quality range of a Thursday. The Blake stitch construction, I don't think is quite as strong as Goodyear welted or a stitch out construction or a stitch down, which it still is stitched down at the toe, but at the heel, it's just uh, Blake stitched around. It'd be really good to see them add some extra support and structure to the heel. So what is this boot best for? If you wanna support uh, as close to a fully USA made boot, this is it. And because it's so lightweight and flexible, it ends up being almost like a sneaker heritage boot. It's a nice, agile heritage boot. Next to the Iron Rangers and the slate that we did, this was, we did this video to kind of check in on Red Wing to see if they'd start changing materials on the inside since we cut apart the original Iron Rangers two years ago. And that passed with flying colors. So everything's exactly the same. The good of this boot is, once again, this Iron Ranger ends up being one of the best heritage boots for the price because you get solid leather in the upper, a big slab of veg tan in your insole, the cork filling, the same things we talked about with the, the mock toe. You know, you don't have that leather midsole. I wish they would add that to the Iron Ranger. I wish they just had that one little layer of either a, a slip sole or a leather sole somewhere in there. It's just a good all around boot. What about the bad? I don't love this cotton uh, lining on the inside. It seems like that wears out really fast. You can point to the fact that it's a leather board heel counter, the leather board rand, but you know, once again, there's not a ton to complain about for the price. So what is this best for? This might be everyone's first heritage boot. It's a really good one. It looks nice. It's got that heritage -y look. It's going to give you the feel of what it feels like comparing like a sneaker that doesn't break in versus this thick veg tan that's going to give you that shape of your foot inside the boot that gives you really unique comfort and feel underfoot. This is maybe just the best starter heritage boot if you're wanting a non mock toe. Finally to the thousand mile boot. This is a boot that I had a lot of hopes in and it just did not perform. And if anything, there's a lot of things that just don't make sense from a boot making perspective. So the good of this boot is once again, it's a classic heritage boot. You have a lot of high quality materials in the Chrome XL upper. You got a leather uh, midsole, some leather in the heel stack, and it's a good looking boot. And this particular last fits me really well. As for the bad, there's a lot, to, a lot of bad to point to. You know, it, I don't love the fake leather heel stack. I don't love the fact that on the inside for 400 bucks, you have a leather, like two half leather sock liners that don't really line up. And for 400 bucks to have a fiberboard insole instead of the really thick veg tan like we've seen in the 300 to $350 boots is kind of an atrocity in my opinion. I'd never spend 400 bucks on a fiberboard insole boot that has this many issues. You know, even like the counter is a cellulose counter. It's okay. You would love the boot if you wore it, you know, there's, except for maybe the lining issue. It's just really overpriced in my opinion compared to the even the boots in this series. So what is this best for? This is best for, if you don't like the Red Wing look, this is a good second alternative if money's not as big of an issue to you. So it's just an alternative if you wanna spend more money for less for a heritage boot.
Now to the official Matusa Rose Anvil ranking of 2022. This will still be an ongoing series that we'll add them, add them to the board as we go along. But as of this point, we sat down, we looked at all the boots that we cut apart that qualify for the, the Matusa series and talked about every single one to really be concrete in our ranking. So I had to re-record the ranking because I completely screwed it up. So number nine, Yeezy Foam Runner. Number eight, Corcoran Jump Boot. Number seven, the Thoroughgood 1957. Number six, the Wolverine Thousand Mile, which we swapped with the Coronado because, it, uh, because it's just better. And number five, the Origin Coronado. Number four, the Thursday Logger. Number three, Top three, the Red Wing Iron Ranger. Number two, the Red Wing 1907. And the number one spot, the JK300. But how does that compare to how you guys ranked them? We asked you guys to rank them off value, which is the quality over the cost. What's the best one per dollar? What's the best value? So you guys rank them number nine, the Yeezy Foam Runner. Number eight, the Corcoran Jump Boot. Number seven, the Wolverine Thousand Miles. So you guys put Origin at number six and then Thoroughgood at number five. So Thoroughgood jumped two spots when it comes to value in your guys' opinion. Number four is the Thursday Logger. Number three to the final three, and you guys, it, it's a lot different than uh, what I thought. So number three was the, the Red Wing Iron Rangers. Number two was the JK300, making the number one spot the Red Wing 1907 for the best value. So pretty interesting results. And so I liked comparing the value compared to just what we ranked off of the strict quality with no money involved. So there's your guys' value ranking compared to my quality ranking. So let me know if you disagree with any of my ranking and how you would have ranked it differently when it comes to the quality. And uh, if you want to see the longer versions of these boots, the cut in half video, where we go through every single detail and test the materials, we'll have links in the description for every single one of these. So check those out. So let me know what you guys think of this video and uh, what other shoes or boots you want us to add to the Matusa series moving forward. And thank you guys for everything you do and supporting these, not just this video, but all these videos that are boots made in the United States. So thank you guys. See ya.